previous episode we talked about some of the cross-site scripting payloads uh, which you can use to bypass some of the filters, uh, WAF rules and application filters and that way uh, the application builders uh, can also learn about what are the protection they need to use in their application to prevent cross-site scripting. Now if we talk about the modern applications uh, which are uh, like you know heavily reliant on the JavaScript so they use like AngularJS in the front end, Node.js, Express in the back end and, and that becomes like you know the applications are heavily used the JavaScript and it becomes very easy for an attacker to target such application for cross-site scripting and that's what we want we, we are going to learn today uh, so thanks for joining in the cyber security for this week uh, please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already and let's get into it so uh, today we are uh, this is like you know a uh, juice shop uh, this is obviously intentional vulnerable application and we are going to learn about how do we find the cross scripting vulnerability how do we exploit it and and not just like you know going through the solution book but also explaining uh, why why this is work like you know why it does work like this and 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 so maybe hopefully when you have to pen test a real application uh, you can you can learn about this ways now before uh, we go deep into this i want to talk about our today's sponsor for this video uh, about the silit so uh, data is like you know the most important asset of every business and when we are talking about the cross site scripting uh, like an you know, attacker can steal data such as session tokens it can it can steal data such as credentials by installing the key loggers etc so being an essential for every business, uh, but like, you know, most companies learn it hard way after like, you know, they go through the data when the data gets compromised. So we are just wondering like, why isn't there a more proactive approach towards the data protection? Because not every company has a, like a IT department or IT team. Uh, and, and sometimes they cannot like, you know, focus on the solutions which are enterprise and which are very expensive. So the teams really look forward to implementing another platform into the infrastructure. We all know there is nothing more complicated than making things simple. So what Silit does is it does all the heavy lifting for you. You can get started as simple as five minutes, continue using your existing communication channel to exchange email files and finally say goodbye to all the password protected data because I use mostly Outlook and Gmail, right? So what it does is still it brings you native add-ins for Outlook. So you can just add the Outlook add-ins Gmail so you can send encrypted emails directly from your existing mailbox using the same email address you use already. And if your email accounts gets hacked, no intruder would be able to access Silit secure emails thanks to their implemented zero trust security model. Silit does provide a free mobile app for biometric authentication to ensure only the internal recipients can access confidential emails and files. Sending secure data is not limited to your organization only. It takes less than 40 seconds for the first time Silit recipient to set up their free read-only account. They can also respond to your emails with the secure messages within the mobile app. That's amazing. And they support any file formats uh, encrypted without password. Protect them in one click using Windows desktop app or simply drag and drop a file to a dedicated area on the Silit portal. And there is also an active monitoring that means you will have an insight into who, when and where has access your data and you will be instantly notified for any suspicious activity. I've been using it for, for a while now. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty amazed. I put the link in the description and also in the comments. So be sure to check it out and, and like, you know, share your feedback how, how it goes. Now let's get back to the video. If you, if, you, uh, if you were to tell me, okay, I have got this application and I want to exploit cross-site scripting, where do I find it? You can find it at various locations. First, you will obviously like you know look for the search box. This was like traditional uh, methodology where you will easily find cross-site scripting in any search boxes. Now you can also find in the URL. You can also find in like you know request body. You can also inject into the headers. Locations, however, uh, do not like rely heavily on AJAX. As I said, like it's a single page application, so you will not see many traffic being captured in the bulk suite or your OAS app. And that makes like you know us thinking, okay, how do we inject process scripting or how do we exploit process scripting in these applications? Uh, for example, let, let's do uh, inspect here and let's monitor the traffic. So if I do this Apple or let's say a salesman artwork add to basket, you saw there was only like you know 
this request and and to be honest it's an it's an XHR request that means it's an Ajax kind of request uh, and that's the reason it's not always possible to inject using the burst rate in this case is you what you need to do is you need to inspect uh, the JavaScript or the, or the client side code and then you will understand how and what payloads I can install here now let's talk take an example of the search box so if you go to the of course there is a like you know easy way and the hard way to inspect like where is the code base being used so if you mouse over uh, here and any of the part is like you know covered it will ha be highlighted in the so as you can see on the screen if you find if you need to find like you know search box you can go line by line and you can find okay where is the search box or what you can do is you can just do the inspect it will take you directly to the code base here so here is the code for our search box and let's take a look at quickly so it's an input box right and it's a text auto auto capitalization is none here is the class for the HTML uh, here's the ID set uh, for of course like you know referencing data placeholder invalid is false area required false so we can see that there is no real protection here against like you know any malicious input so simply what we can do here is we can we all know this payload right this is very uh, simple and we have done this so many times so we are just going to do this access us now this will go into this input box and given there is no real protection it will create like an iframe within the iframe it will create the javascript object and, and of course it's going to reflect the cross site scripting access as ever so let's hit the enter so as you can see uh, access has been like we are able to like you know execute the javascript so that was uh, that's like you know uh, the easiest example on on how you can find uh, this like we can also call it as dom xss right so this is the example of the dom xss where it's not going through any any traffic now if you want if you want to check that real quick let's open up our birth rate uh, let's go back to the browser let's do all. see we got the search we had the intercept on but still we haven't really got anything here so because this is all like websocket uh, we, we are also going to learn I think we have we have done a video on the websocket and its security vulnerabilities maybe you can check it out but I'll also tell you how the vulnerabilities you can exploit in these applications for the websocket but the, the the point was even if we did the apple here you will not see any traffic in the bob suite and the reason being is it's a it's an xhr request it's an ajax request so you're not gonna see that so you have to deal with the like in you know, reviewing the code in the console or in the in the browser itself and exploit the other one's find another place where we can exploit the cross scripting the easiest uh, the place is i actually had placed this order earlier and if you click on this track order you can see in the URI there is an ID going on and as I said like these are some some of the easiest uh, like you know places where you can exploit the process if, even if you so if you run like a scanners like burp or anything it will just look at the uh, like you know HTML and the code and it can easily pick up there is vulnerability of XSS because there is no real protection against it so what we need to simply do here is again uh, just uh, put the same payload here now if you see uh, if you have noticed one thing it has been encoded uh, and it's kind of encoded like you know in the URL so let's do one thing uh, let's in order to exploit this and actually you can also do this we can also do the inspect and uh, do 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 yeah here so you can see there is no real protection here right so now let's go back and do encode as URL uh, just to double check okay copy this here and hit enter and then refresh the page and you can see our payload has been executed so sometimes of course you cannot push like you know put payload as is like space and everything uh, browser doesn't interpret that way uh, again depending on the browser you're using for uh, exploiting this but usually yeah 
you do want to make sure uh, that you encode all the all the payloads and then execute it uh, like for this kind of application always like you know check on the client side code and then try to exploit this vulnerabilities i think that's that's how and and for the developers i think uh, even though you're using like frameworks such as angular and 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 like you know all the good framework with the javascript protection uh, make sure you do have your own protection against it you usually WAF will give you enough protection but yeah you should also not just rely on the WAF. we have discussed that in the past why uh, but yeah that's it for uh, this session uh, do try this out this is an open source application you can you can deploy on your local system you can try it out, try it out. you can also find some other uh, really cool cross site scripting vulnerability do mention in the comment section if you are not able to exploit any of this or you need any help they do have solution kind and everything so but my 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 point is not about like you know just going through the solution but also learn about why this is being exploited and what are the kind of other things that you should look after when you when you come across the real world application not just like go through solution by solution so i hope you had fun uh, please hit the uh, like button if you haven't already uh, i'll i'll see you guys next monday bye